tuweze kushiriki pamoja katika ibada ya siku ya leo aa vila lisema pia nimeoa niko na mke ambaye anaitwa Emilia Chien alafu tunayo mtoto mmoja ambaye pia anaitwa Ray Ooko so hivyo ndivyo kwa sasa hivi tumebarikiwa mengine ameachia Mungu ili afanye mapenzi yake aa <laughs> yes. Nimesema kwa sasa hivi hivyo ndivyo tumebarikiwa. Mengine tunaachia Mungu. Amen. Tunasema amen. amen. Asante sana. Ah uh, tumekaa kwa ndoa muda ambao sio mwingi sana lakini tunashukuru kwa hiyo muda mchache na wale ambao wale tutangulia pia tunawatakia mema katika hii safari. Uh, Leo ni siku ya uimbaji na hivyo basi kwaya tuweze kukaa tayari mtakapokuwa naendelea na kuhubiri ninapofika mahali mtaita kwaya unakuja mbele unaimba tunasoma neno kidogo kwaya inakuja inaimba nasoma neno kidogo kwaya inakuja inaimba so hiyo ndio mtindo tutaendelea nayo siku ya leo haitakuwa chuku kusoma neno throughout nasoma inapofika mahali nayo list hapa ya kwaya unaita unauja unakuja mbele unaimba na kiongozi wetu wa kwaya katika ofisi yako anaposoma jinsi ambavyo mnaimba alisema mwisho atatoa comment kwa hivyo unapokuja mbele ujipange nzuri kwa mavazi kuanzia kichwa mpaka the toes uh, jinsi ambavyo inatamka maneno katika uimbaji hako hapa atakueleza kama kuna makosa ili tuweze kurekebisha katika upendo so nimesema ni kuimba na kusoma neno kuimba na kusoma neno ninaona makwaya karibu tisa Kongo SD Talaibon Milimani New Life Kericho Central now Highland Men Prison Medium Talaibon Youth so ama sijasoma nzuri nasikia iko sawa 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 asante now uh, katika mahubiri yetu ya siku ya leo tukijua kwamba ni siku ya uimbaji uh, mtaanza kusema machache kuhusu uimbaji alafu uweze kuyachukua one or two points kutokana na jambo ambalo nitasoma ili usibaki nyuma tuombe ili tuweze kuendelea muumba wa bingu na nchi ni wakati wa kusoma neno lako tunapoendelea na ibada ya takatifu tunakualika katika sabato hii ya leo shuke tuweze kushiriki pamoja ni katika jina la Yesu tuombe na takuamini amen kuna fungu tulisoma kitabu cha funuo naamini ya kwamba kila mtu akona biblia yake nitasoma uh, kwa haraka sana chapter 5 the whole of chapter 5 revelation by nasema and i saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with the seven seals then i saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the scroll and to lose its seals and no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it so i wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it but one of the elders said to me do not weep behold the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david david was prevailed has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals and i looked and behold in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of god sent out into all the earth then he came and he took the scroll out of the right hand of who sat on the throne now when he had taken the scroll the four living creatures and the 24 elders 
fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp, a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. You are for you are slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of, the, of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of the thousands saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the twenty-four elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Son to son. Uh, katika njia za ibada, tuajua ya kwamba one of the ways ambazo tunazitumia kwa budu muumba wetu, elements of worship Moja yapo ni maombi Moja yapo ni Bible study ama kusoma Biblia Moja yapo uh, ya jinsi ya kuabudu Mungu ni kupitia nyimbo Moja yapo ni fellowship ama ushirika na hata la mwisho ambapo nataka nitaje ni kuhusu tithes and offering ni njia ambazo tunazitumia kuabudu muumba wetu. So tunapo kuwa katika sala, tunaabudu Mungu, tunapo kuwa katika mafundisho ya Biblia ama Bible study au uchambuzi wa Biblia, tunamwabudu Mungu. Tunapoingia katika uimbaji, ni njia moja ya kuabudu Mungu. Tunapoingia katika uh, kutoa zaka na sadaka, ni njia ya kuabudu Mungu. Na hata tunapofanya ushirika ni njia ambazo tunatumia kuabudu muumba wetu. Now, tunapoongea siku ya leo kuhusu uh, music ama nyimbo tunamaanisha nini? Music mwingine alisema ya kwamba music is an organized sound. Hiyo tutatafuta katika tafsiri la Kiswahili ama katika lugha ya CLA an organized sound mwingine akasema ya kwamba music is a pleasing or interesting sound kuna sauti ambao unapendeza sauti ambao unavutia katika kitabu ambacho tumesoma tumeona jinsi ambavyo viumbe kule juu mbinguni wamekuwa wakisifu Mungu au kusifu Kristo kupitia uimbaji sababu gani tunafanya uimbaji mbona tunaimba mbona tunakuwa na kipindi cha music katika kanisa tunapokuwa kule nyumbani in family worship tunapokuwa katika ushirika kanisani au mahala popote tunapokuwa mbona tunafanya uimbaji mwingine akasema ya kwamba music uh, inatumika kwa ajili ya kuinua roho kufanya roho uweze kuwa uh, uone umuhimu wa Kristo ama iwe na furaha so tunapoimba tunainua roho zetu in other words kama kuna mtu ambaye alikuwa discouraged alikuwa amekufa moyo lakini anapoimba nyimbo fulani unapata kwamba mtu anapata furaha fulani katika maisha yake so ina amusha roho mahali ambapo ilikuwa inalala na iweze kutukuza muumba wetu nataja tu a few ili tuweze kuingia katika kitabu cha ufunuo ambao tumesoma 
Tuone jinsi ambavyo walitunga wimbo walizingatia mambo yapi katika wimbo ambao walikuwa wanaimba Uimbaji tunaambia kwamba is made to serve a holy purpose uh, tunapotumika katika uimbaji tunafaa kuimba nyimbo za utakatifu ambazo zinaongoza watu wote katika njia za utakatifu kanisa ama family worship tuweze kuongozwa na roho za uimbaji na tuimbe nyimbo ambazo zinatukuza nani Mwenyezi Mungu wetu Hivyo basi tunapoenda katika ufunuo tano tunataka kuangalia mbona watu hawa wameingia katika umbaji mbona wote wameanguka chini ili waweze kumsujudu Mungu mbona wote 24 elders and the four living creatures wakaungana pamoja wanapoimba kuna kitu ambacho kilifanyika katika maisha yao kuna wasiwasi ambao walikuwa nayo ama kuna jinsi ambavyo walikuwa na shida fulani walikuwa wamekosa tumaini mahali basi walipoona yule ambao wanamwimbia yale ambao aliyafanya wakaanguka na wakasema tutamwabudu unapofika chapter 5 verses 1 tumepata kwamba Yohana anapoandika anaona uh, malaika mkuu na malaika amebeba nini amebeba the scroll katika lugha ya kizungu anapobeba anasema kwamba it was seal ilikuwa imezuiliwa nzuri ama ilikuwa imefunikwa nzuri na hakuna yeyote yule ambaye angeweza kuifungua na anasema kwamba ndani yake kuna maandishi ambayo yalikuwa yameandikwa yakawa sealed with the seven seals basi katika mstari wa pili akauliza swali mbona Yohana anauliza swali ameona uh, scroll ambayo kuna malaika amebeba katika mkono wake wa kuume na hakuna yeyote ambaye anaweza kuifungua ili watambue wajue ni nini ambaye ameandikwa pale ndani katika mstari wa pili akauliza who is swathed to open the scroll and to lose its seals nani alikuwa na uwezo wa kuifungua kutoa hizo seals ili, ili tuweze kuyajua yale ambaye ameandikwa pale attention yetu au our focus au focus ya Yohana katika kitabu cha ufunuo anatupeleka katika the seal ambayo ilikuwa imewekwa seven seals ambayo iko katika the right hand of god na tunapata kwamba no one was able to open the scroll or to read what was written inside hakuna yeyote alikuwa na uwezo wa kufungua na hata kuyasoma yale ambayo yameandikwa pale ndani so yohana angeweza kuona maandiko tu hapo nje lakini hajui ni yapi yameandikwa pale ndani basi akawa na tashishi katika maisha yake ndio maana anasema katika mstari wa tatu ya kwamba hakuna yeyote ambaye alikuwa ameonekana katika bingu au katika inchi ambaye alikuwa na uwezo wa kufungua baada ya kuona hivyo Yohana alianguka katika nini mambo ya kulia akaanza kuwipa akaanza kulia maana hajui ni yapi yapo pale ndani anapoendelea kulia katika mstari wa tano anaambiwa jambo fulani katika mstari wa tano but one of the elders mzee mmoja kati ya wazee waliokuwa pale wakamwambia ya kwamba usilie do not weep wae tazama simba wa yuda yeye yuko tayari kuifungua nini the scroll ambao unaona ya kwamba hakuna yeyote ambao hakuna uwezo wa kufungua in hold the lamb of the tribe of judah the root of david has prevailed to open the scroll 
and to lose its seven seals. So anaambiwa acha kuwa na waziwasi katika maisha. Wacha kulia, wacha kujuta, kuwa na tumaini maana tunaye mmoja ambaye anaitwa Simba wa Yuda ambaye ako tayari kuifungua na kuyasoma na hata kuinterpret mambo ambayo yako pale ndani. So anapewa tumaini. Basi wakati ambapo anapewa tumaini Yohana anaacha kulia alafu anaelekeza macho yake kwa mwana kondoo ambaye yuko tayari kumuokoa katika hiyo hali. So wakati ambapo Kristo anachukua the scroll ili aweze kuifungua aweze kuyatazama Yohana anajua kwamba ukombozi wetu haiwezi kukamilika kama crawl, the scroll cannot be open if the seals could not be unsealed anajua kwamba ukombozi wetu haijakuwa mkamilifu ndio maana yeyote yule ambaye alikuwa na uwezo wa kuifungua ni mmoja tu ambaye alikuwa ni nani Yesu Kristo malaika hawangeweza kuifungua maana hawangeweza kuleta ukombozi tunatafuta the background why malaika wote kule juu mbinguni pamoja na wazee and the four creatures wamekaa pamoja wanapoimba wanaimba sababu la kwanza wameona mwana kondoo simba wa yuda ambaye akona uwezo wa kufanya ukombozi wetu iwe kamilifu for our salvation to be complete the scroll must be open and the only person who could do it was Jesus Christ so yohana anajiuliza who is able to do it basi anaambiwa It is only one person ambaye anaitwa nani? Yesu Kristo ambaye ni simba wa Yuda, the root of David. The seal, uh, the seal inatupeleka katika ufunuo nane mstari wa kwanza na wa pili ambao tutasoma, lakini inazungumzia about the seven trumpet. Tujue kwamba seven ina symbolize what? ukamilifu so there are seven seals we have seven trumpets ambazo zinaonyesha ukamilifu katika mambo ya nini mambo ya wokovu wetu ninaposema mambo haya nasubiri kanisa uh, ya medium i mean main prison wakuja hapa mbele ninapotamatisha haya mnaanza kuimba tunapofika pale tunaambia kwamba the seventh trumpet was blown the great day of god's wrath was announced wakati ambapo tarumbeta wa saba inapulizwa wakati huu tunapata kwamba uh, gadabu yake Mwenyezi Mungu pia inatangazwa kanisa ya men prison Wakati ambapo tarumbeta wa saba inapulizwa wakati ambapo the seventh seal inafunguliwa tunapata kwamba ghadhabu au hasira yake Mwenyezi Mungu inapulizwa wakati ambapo inapulizwa inaleta hukumu so wakati ambapo inaleta hukumu ndio maana tunasema ya kwamba Yohana alikuwa kilia anataka kujua hukumu inapotokea hukumu inapofika ni akina nani ambao watawakolewa ni akina nani watapata nafasi ya uzungu wa milele so anaingia katika kuomboleza na kulia maana the seventh trumpet inapulizwa maana the seventh seal inafunguliwa na pia anasema kwamba ghadhabu au hasira yake Mwenyezi Mungu inamwagwa So the trumpet was to bring judgment. And we know that at the cross hukumu ulitangazwa. Msalaba wa Yesu Kristo ulileta hukumu katika ulimwengu mzima. Hukumu ya haki kwa wale ambao watatembea katika njia ya Kristo. Hukumu ambao Mungu anayafanya tujue kwamba ni hukumu ambayo haina ubaguzi. Hukumu ambao hauna upande, upendeleo 
hukumu ambayo ni ya haki. So Yohana anataka kujua ni yapi yameandikwa pale. Na sira inapomwagwa ni akina nani wataokolewa? Ni akina nani watapata nafasi ya uzima wa milele? The seal could be opened by the appointed heir and this was Jesus Christ. Yule ambaye alikuwa na uwezo wa kufungua huu ni yule ambaye alipewa uwezo ambaye ni Yesu Kristo ili aweze kuyafungua. Karibu katika wimbo
Asante sana. Wazee wajamua. Nilikuwa heri nanyi pia muweze kuamua. Asante sana. Nao tunaongea kuhusu Yesu Kristo ambaye alikuwa na uwezo wa kufungua kitabu kile. Naposoma hiyo mstari wa tano kuna majina three great titles ambazo anapewa. Jina la kwanza tumesema anaitwa the lion of the tribe of Judah. Simba kutoka katika kabila ya Yuda. Na hapo tutakujua nzuri naenda katika kitabu cha mwanzo tisa mstari wa nane hadi mstari wa kumi mzee yule aliita vijana wake wote kumi na wawili akaanza kuambia kila mmoja yale ambaye atakayojiri katika maisha yao yale ambaye yatatokea katika siku za mwisho hizo unapokuwa pale katika kitabu cha mwanzo na tisa mstari wa uh, tisa mstari wa nane inasema hivi Juda this is Jacob talking to Juda meita vijana wake wote ameaongea pamoja nao wakati wake wa kupumzika imefika Juda you are the, uh, you are he whom your brother shall praise so wakati ambapo uh, taifa lote lina mtukuza Kristo wakati ambapo mataifa yote yanamkuru Kristo si ajabu ilikuwa imesewa kitambo ya kwamba your brothers shall praise you Judah inakuja inatimika ndani ya Yesu Kristo mambo haya ambayo yalisemwa kule mwanzo Your father's children I mean your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies your father's children shall bow down before you Judah is a lion well from the prey my son hata ninapoacha pale naweza endelea kujisomea ukiwa nyumbani so mambo haya Yakobo alikuwa ameandika kitabu ya kwamba mataifa yote yatafahamu na gani yatamwimbia Yesu Kristo watamwimbia Judah Japokuwa watu walimdharau Yuda, hawakumuona kama mtu wa maana, lakini mwishowe sasa tunatukuza Yesu Kristo kutoka katika uh, ukoo wa Yuda. Hayo utajisomea baadaye. Tunaposema a lion, a lion symbolizes dignity. A lion symbolizes sovereignty. A lion symbolizes victory. Tunapoongea kuhusu the lion of Judah Tunapoongea kuhusu Yesu Kristo, tunaongea kuhusu yule ambaye ni mshindi. Tunaongea kuhusu yule ambaye hakuna heshima, amepewa heshima kule juu mbinguni na hata hapa ulimwenguni alipewa heshima na bado anaendelea kupewa heshima. Tunamwimbia yule ambaye ni mshindi, alishinda kifo wakati wa kuzaliwa kwake, alishinda kifo akiwa kaburini. Na Yesu ameshinda yote katika maisha haya. Ndio maana tunamtukuza, tunamwimbia nyimbo za ushindi because it's the lion of Judah ambaye ina symbolize what? Sovereignty, utawala, ana symbolize what? Uh, dignity pamoja na nini? Na victory. Tunajua kwamba ushindi ambayo Yesu alipokea nasi pia tukiwa ndani yake lazima tuwe washindi. Jina la pili ambaye anapewa anaitwa the root of david tunajua ya kwamba ili daudi aweze kupatikana jesus is the creator and through him and by him viumbe vyote vikaumbwa anaitwa the root of david to our existence ili tuweze kuonekana ili tuweze kupatikana tuwe viumbe hai ni kwa uwezo wake Mwenyezi Mungu kwa uwezo wake Yesu Kristo So tunamwimbia yule ambaye alifanya tuweze kuwa jinsi tulivyo ili tuwetu wa Kristo it is because of Christ. Jina la tatu ambalo anapewa pale anaitwa the lamb of God. Katika nyumba ya Israeli walikuwa wanajua uh, a lamb anapo wanaposikia kuhusu lamb ilikuwa inatolewa kwa ajili ya kapara 
ilikuwa na chenji wa ile watu wasamehewe dhambi zao mtu akifanya dhambi anakuja na nini anakuja na mwana kondoo inapochinjwa kuhani anapofanya mambo yake pale basi mtu kama huyo anasamehewa dhambi zao so anaitwa the lamb and through the lamb tunapata kwamba sisi wote tunasafishwa kupitia kwa mwana kondoo sisi wote tumeokolewa sisi wote tunao nafasi ya kuona usimu wa milele through the blood of the lamb of god tunapata kwamba tunakuwa cleansed tunasafishwa tunatakazwa tunawekwa huru kupitia kwa damu ya nani damu yake Yesu Kristo ndio maana yule mtunzi wa wimbo aliemba wa muendea Yesu kwa mna gani kusafishwa wa muendea Yesu kwa kusafishwa kwa kusafishwa kwa damu ya kondoo siwe safi nguo nyeupe sana kwa oshwa kwa damu ya kondoo kuoshwa kuoshwa kwa damu kwa damu kitu takasayo ya kondoo siwe safi kuone upe sana waoshwa kwa damu ya kondoo asante sana mtunzi alikuwa anajua na kwamba ili tutakasu ili tusafishwe ili tuwe wakamilifu ni kuoshwa kwa damu ya mwana kondoo. Kwa hivyo the 24 elders au the elder yule ambaye alikuwa anaongelesha Yohana anamwambia do not we behold the lion of the tribe of Judah behold the root of David behold the lamb of God who is worthy to take the scroll and to open it. Kwa hivyo hiyo jambo kwa washiriki kwa Wakristo inatutia moyo inatutia nguvu katika safari ya kwamba let us not weep no matter what happens in life waacha tuweze kumtazama nani mwana kondoo. Tumtazame the lamb of Judah. Tunapotunga nyimbo tutunge nyimbo ambazo inasifu nani the lion of Judah. Tutunge nyimbo ambazo zinasifu nani the root of David tunge nyimbo ambazo ni asifu the lamb of god who was worthy and is worthy and will still be worthy to open the scroll who is worthy to take control of what happens in life anaambiwa behold the lamb of god the name of the lamb is, in, is very important in our life as christians ni kitu cha maana sana ni mada nzuri sana katika maisha yetu ya Ukristo why yeye ndiye mkombozi wetu yeye anaitwa Yesu Kristo our redeemer mkombozi wetu the old testament question in the book of genesis chapter 22 verse 7 kunapoyasoma kule unakutana na mzee mmoja pamoja na kijana yake mzee anamwambia kijana kwamba chukua kuni na uweze kujiandaa tuende mlimani kumwabudu Mungu. Wanapofika mahali pamoja na wafanyikazi wake basi anaambia wafanyikazi mbaki nyuma waacha tuende na kijana. Wanapofika mahali kijana anamuuliza baba ya kwamba sawa tunaenda tazama hapa kuna kuni tazama hapa tunao moto lakini wapi nini? Wapi mwana kondoo? Basi hiyo swali linajibiwa na Yohana. Yohana anasema kwamba tazama mwana kondoo wanapofika pale msituni wanapomwabudu mzee anapotaka kutoa kijana yake kama kafara anaambia kwamba mzee usiwe nini mwana wako tazama nyuma yako kuna nini kuna kondoo na huyu kondoo ndio ambaye uh, tunamzungumzia hapa ambaye unapenda katika Yohana moja tisa anaambia watu wote ya kwamba tazama mwana kondoo ambao unachukua dhambi za ulimwengu mzima and the choir in heaven also passed into singing wanapoimba mwana kondoo 
unapoenda katika mstari wa mbili katika ufunuo tano ambao tulikuwa tunasoma wanasema wadi wadi salam that was then wanaimba kuhusu mwana kondoo ambao ulichinjwa mwana kondoo ambao alijitoa kwa ajili ya wokovu wetu kwa hivyo ninaposema haya ni kwamba nyimbo ambazo tunatunga tunazoimba ni nyimbo ambazo zinafaa kumsifu na kumsujudu mwana kondoo ambaye alichinjwa and who is one ambaye alikuwa nafaa katika ukombozi wetu ili ukombozi wetu uweze kukamilika it is the lamb of god ambaye anasema wadi wadi is the lamb of god that was slain naposoma ufunuo bara anasema kwamba alichinjwa kitambo hata kabla ya msingi ya ulimwengu huo hujawekwa bwana kondoo alikuwa amechinjwa kwa ajili ya wokovu wetu now we worship god nataka nisome mstari wa sita in chapter 5 ninapoita kanisa ya new life church new life church come in front ninaposoma mstari wa sita in the book of revelation chapter 5 we worship him we serve him we praise him tunamwimbia nyimbo kwa sababu gani mstari wa sita anasema hivi ufunuo tano and i looked and behold in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders to the lamb as though it had been slain having seen having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of god sent out into all the earth now to begin with tunamwabudu Kristo kwa sababu ya kuwa yeye ni nani because of who he is tunamwimbia nyimbo za sifa sababu yeye ni nani Biblia nasema ya kwamba sasa hivi ameketi wapi katika falme wa bingu sasa hivi yuko mbinguni he is not in the manger he is not in Jerusalem he is not on the cross or in the tomb He ascended and exalted in heaven. Yule ambaye tunamwimbia, yule ambaye tunamsifu, ni yule ambaye hayuko tena kaburini, hayuko tena msalabani, hayuko Yerusalemu, yuko wapi? Yuko mbinguni ameketi pale katika kiti kizuri, ameinuliwa, ametukuzwa. Yeye ndiye yule ambaye tunamwabudu. So these elders, these four creatures are worshiping yule ambaye ayuko kaburini tena wanamwimbia yule ambaye alifufuka na kwa ufufuo wake nasi pia tujue kwamba tutafufuka wale ambao watalala katika Bwana watafufuka wanapopara nafasi ya kwanza ya kuingia katika uzimu wa milele wanapoketi pamoja na Kristo in fact tunaposoma Biblia inasema ya kwamba katika ulimwengu wa kiroho tumeketi na Kristo katika ufalme wa mbingu katika kiroho tuko pale mwili tuko hapa tutasoma hiyo fugu tunapoanzia naye waimbaji wimbo moja kwa haraka kama uko na njaa tutatulia tu maana lazima tumalie Yeah.
But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love which he, with which he had loved us, then when we were dead in the trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. We are alive. We are not dead. Njaa. Njaa. Tunaishi. Tuko hai. Dania nani? Yesu Christo. Made us alive together with Christ. That is past tense. By grace, you have been saved. Past tense. Not that you will be saved. Tunyo kwa mba tume okolewa. Dio mara tunamuibia nani? Yesu Christo. Mstari wa sita na sema. And raised us up together. And made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ndania Yesu Christo. Mahali ambapa meketi. Tumeketi pa moja nahi. Amjamu. Sijui kama umepata jambo hilo. Ya kwamba raised us up together. That is verse 6. And made us sit together. In the heavenly places made us sit together. When is that? Tomorrow or today or past? Past. Past tense. Made us sit together. In the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Don't forget verse 7. That in the ages to come. He might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. So we are just waiting to see it in reality. There's a time it will be tangible. There's a time we will see it with our naked eye. Lakini katika hali ya kiroho, tuko pamoja na aipan. Wanaabudu, wanasifu, wanamuimbia, Yule ambaye ameketi katika kiti chaenzi kule jubinguni. Na paulo anapoandika 
anasema kwamba tumeketishwa pamoja naye pale si ya kwamba yuko pale kivyake sisi katika kiroho wakiona hiyo walipoona walipoyasikia mambo hayo wakasema hii ni kuimbia Mungu hakuna kitu kingine we will not sit down we will stand up we will we we'll kneel down and worship the creator we will worship jesus christ maana yote ambayo umetutendea anafaa sifa na utukufu so jesus christ is the center of our worship tunapomwabudu yule ambaye anafaa kuwa katikati katika mambo ya ibada yetu ni Kristo ndio maana tunapata kwamba uh, malaika hawa wanasumbuka kiti cha NC and they worship and they praise the living Christ the angels around the throne and circle the savior and praise him we worship the living reigning lamb of god who is in the midst of all in heaven hata kule juu mbinguni biblia nasema ya kwamba yuko katika mati we worship him we praise him we sing about jesus christ because of what he does yale abana yafanya katika mstari wa nane now when he had taken the scroll i mean revelation chapter 5 Now when they had taken when he had taken the scroll who is this Jesus Christ the following creatures and then 24 elders fell down before the lamb each having a harp and a golden bowl full of incense which are the prayers of the saints and they sang a new song you are worthy that is the song that they were singing baada ya kuanguka chini miguni pake wale viumbe inne pamoja na wazee 24 mbele yake kondo uh, mwana kondo wakachukua uh, instruments or music na wakaketi chini ili waanze kumwabudu na wakaanza kumwimbia wimbo mpya katika hiyo mstari wa sita na hii ndio wimbo waliokuwa wanaimba wanasema you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals you for you were slain and have redeemed us to god by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our god and we shall reign on the earth vile tu tujui tune ya wimbo huo kama tungejua tune tungeimba wimbo huo ambao hao wazee waliweza kuimba baada ya kuona yale ambayo kristo aliyafanya wanasema he is the only one who is worthy to take the scroll ni yeye pekee yake anafaa kuchukua nini kitabu na kuifungua so we worship christ we praise him we sing jesus christ because of what he does katika maisha yetu walipoona yale ambayo aliweza kuyafanya majuto yalikoma kuomboleza yalikoma wakaanza kuimba kumbe tutamwimbia Kristo baada tu kuona yale ambayo hakuna uwezo ya kuyafanya kabla tujaona umuhimu wa Kristo kabla tujaona yale ambayo ametutendea hatuwezi kumwimbia watu wanapotunga nyimbo tofauti tofauti hata za kidunia the secular music wanaimbia watu fulani sababu ya uwezo wako nayo ama yale ambayo wameyafanya ama yale ambayo wanapanga kuyafanya lakini sisi kama Kristo kama kanisa tunapoimba nyimbo tunaimba nyimbo ambazo zinatukuza Mungu sababu ya yale uwezo wako nayo sababu ya uwezo wako nayo katika maisha yetu yale ambayo ametutendea anapanga kututendea na hata yale ambayo atatutendea basi wazee hao wakasema sisi tutamwibia hatutanyamaza kama hauimbi katika kwaya na uko na sauti swali so nikijiuliza ni kwamba je tumeona yale ambayo Kristo ametutendea ama hatuja yaona God's people and the representatives of God's creation joined their voices in a new song of praise tunapata ya kwamba uh, watu wa Mungu na wawakilishi wote waka jiunga pamoja wakaweka sauti yao pamoja wanapoimba wimbo mpya wake mwana kondoo what kind of song did they sing 
it was a worship him kitu cha kwanza ilikuwa wimbo lenye ibada wale imba wimbo wa ibada wanaposema thou art worthy you are worthy our lord you are worthy the lamb of christ to be worthy wanasema ya kwamba hakuna uwezo and that was with jesus alone so nyimbo ambazo wanaimba ni nyimbo za ibada but katika kwaya ambazo tunaimba siku hizi kuna kwaya zingine ambazo zinatunga nyimbo ambazo uh, pengine inatukuza maisha yao wenyewe ama uwezo wao ama it is i centered yani atu mwimbie Kristo sisi ni malalamiko kila wakati katika nyimbo ambazo tunaimba wimbo ambaye analalamika maisha yametulemea not knowing we are in the end time and let me assure you that in the end time life cannot be as easy as before mambo lazima yabadilike so sisi ambao tunajua kwamba katika uh, unabii siku za mwisho ni siku za hatari kama ni siku za hatari inamaanisha maisha haitakuwa the same basi sisi kama kanisa tunafaa kuimba nyimbo ambazo zinakuwa Kristo am Christ centered sio ya malalamiko sio ya kulalamikia maisha kila wakati let us center our song services i mean the songs that we are composed on the victory of Jesus Christ and the worship of Jesus Christ I'm not saying maisha hayezi kuwa magumu lazima iwe magumu maybe we prepare for the worst don't be afraid the bible says when you are reading daniel chapter 12 at that time michael the great angel will stand on the side of his people wakati huo malaika mkuu uh, mikaeli atasimama upande wa watu wa Mungu wakati ambapo mambo yanaharibika malaika am um, mikaeli mkuu anasimama upande wa watu wa Mungu what kind of song did they sing this is a song a gospel song wimbo wa habari njema gospel is a good news ni habari njema so wanapoimba wazee 24 pamoja na the four living creatures wanaimba nyimbo ambazo ni ya uh, habari njema because wanasema kwamba alichinjwa na walichinjwa kwa sababu gani alichinjwa kwa sababu ya dhambi zetu alijitoa kama kafara kwa ajili ya maisha yetu ili tuweze kuokolewa so wanapoimba wanapeana ujumbe kwa mataifa yote kwa ulimwengu mzima ya kwamba dhambi zenu tayari imefahamu na gani imeondolewa wanawapa habari njema ya kwamba ndani ya Yesu Kristo tunao nini tunao ukombozi Isaiah anaposema katika Isaya 53 mstari wa 5 anastate anaeleza vizuri ya kwamba Kristo alikufa kwa ajili ya ulimwengu mzima Yohana anakubali anasema ya kwamba Kristo ndio yule kondoo ambaye anatoa dhambi za ulimwengu mzima ambayo ni habari njema kwako pamoja na mimi na hata wale ambao wanatusikia kutoka nje ya kwamba Kristo alisulubishwa kwa ajili ya dhambi zetu iwe ondoleo la dhambi zetu tuwe wakamilifu mbele za Mungu ambayo ni habari njema kwa mataifa nzima kwa mataifa yote hiyo ni habari njema ambayo tunafaa kuyatangaza ya kwamba tumesamehewa kwa damu ya Yesu Kristo wote tuko hai so when they are singing they are singing a gospel song wimbo wa habari njema kwa ulimwengu mzima heaven sings about the cross and the blood hata bingu waliimba kuhusu uh, uh, the cross au msalaba wa Kristo pamoja na nini na damu yake ambayo lina msingi katika ukombozi wetu when we sing what type of songs do we sing tunajitukuza ama tunatukuza Kristo jambo lingine ni kwamba what kind of song did they sing waliimba wimbo aina gani it was a missionary song wimbo ambao inaonyesha ulimwengu mzima that sinners have been redeemed wenye dhambi wote wameokolewa that is verses 9 unaposoma 
anasema ya kwamba uh, and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Ametrudisha, ametupatanisha na Kristo na Mungu mwenyewe. Unaposoma kitabu cha Wakorintho wa pili tano, mstari wa nani inasema ya kwamba sisi wote kapika katika kifo cha Yesu Kristo tulipatanishwa, tulirudishwa katika nini? Katika familia yake Mwenyezi Mungu. So the songs they are singing ni zile ambazo ni za umishenari ambayo inatangaza ukombozi katika kila lugha, kila jamaa, kila taifa, kila lugha na watu wote katika ulimwengu huu wajue ya kwamba Kristo alisulubishwa na Kristo ameokoa watu wote. John chapter 3 verse 16 we know that uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that is the message ambayo tunajua Yesu anasema katika Mathayo 28 mstari wa 18 na 20 ya kwamba sasa waende katika ulimwengu mzima na kuwafanya kuwa nini? wanafunzi watu wakiwafundisha na kuyashika yote ambayo aliwaagiza so tunapoimba nyimbo tunaimba nyimbo za umishenari tunaenda kwa ulimwengu kutangaza uhuru ambao tumepewa ndani yake Yesu Kristo they are singing what kind of song a devotional hymn that devotional hymn na nifanya niweze kuita kwaya moja ninapotamatisha sasa ni kwaya sijaita kwaya gani kilicho central kama kilicho central ni saa saba na nusu leo ni siku ya uimbaji wakati wa kuimba kuna njaa kuna mtu akona njaa eh muda nasema eh okay sawa What kind of song did they sing? It was a, a prophetic, I mean a, a devotional hymn. Wimbo wenye ibada. Sababu gani? Inasema the uniqueness of our position in Christ that we have become a kingdom of priests. Tumekuwa a uh, makuhani like Mel- Melchizedek of the old. Tunaambia kwamba Believers are kings and priests. Waumini ni wafalme wafa, tena wa kuhani. Hiyo ni katika mstari wa nini? Mstari wa tisa wa ufunuo tano. So wimbo ambao wanaimba inatuambia kwamba sisi kama wakristo tujue kwamba tumefananishwa na wafalme. Tumefananishwa na wakuhani kama sisi ni wafalme basi hofu ya nini katika maisha haya tunafaa kuwa na ujasiri maana lile kitambaa lilipogawanyika mara mbili wakati ambapo Kristo alisulubishwa that very hour basi lipopasuka hivi tunajua kwamba ile pena nafasi ya mimi pamoja na wewe kufikia ukombozi wetu kufikia muumba wetu so nasema ya kwamba we are priests we are kings katika wakati huu na itakuwa wazi wakati ambapo Kristo atashuka na ufalme wake. So let you know, let me know that we are priests. We are kings. Usiomboleze. Usijute kuwa na tumaini katika maisha. Spiritual Central. Hiyo kwa imepatikana.
We shall reign with Christ when he comes the 1000 years tujue ya kwamba tutaketi pamoja na Kristo tunapofahamu na gani tunapotoa hukumu katika ulimwengu mzima 
basi tunaambia kwamba Kristo katika maisha yake aliposhuka katika ulimwengu huu alipozaliwa katika maisha yake tunajua kwamba basi wengi waliweza kumchekelea wengi waliweza kumdhihaki wengi waliweza kumdharau lakini sasa ni mshindi tunajua kwamba Yesu aliacha utajiri kule juu mbinguni akashuka katika ulimwengu huu akaishi kama maskini kwa ajili ya wokovu wetu he became poor so that he become rich yeye kuteseka kwake yeye kuangamia kwake uh, umaskini ambayo aliona katika maisha haya ilifanyika ili wewe pamoja na mimi tuweze kuwa matajiri hivyo basi Kristo anaposhuka yeye utasoma katika Wakorinto wa pili nane mstari wa tisa nasema ya kwamba he became poor so that he become rich tunapata ya kwamba watu wakamwona ya kwamba ni mjinga but now tunajua kwamba he is the wisdom of god that one when you go to the book of uh, uh, colossians chapter 2 verses 8 uh, inatuambia kwamba he is the wisdom of who the wisdom of god tunajua ya kwamba Kristo alishuka katika ulimwengu huu basi akachukua mwili wetu wa dhambi ili tuwe uh, ili tuweze kuokolewa tunajua kwamba alimfanywa mdhambi ili wewe pamoja na mimi tuweze kupata uzima wa milele na katika hiyo hali yake tunajua kwamba aliyashinda yote aliteseka akaishi kiu Yesu akawa na usingizi kama mwanadamu Yesu akavumilia mateso yote na today tunapozungumza tunaelewa kwamba sifa na utukufu alisema walikuwa nasema kwamba hona and glory be unto him kwa yote ambaye alitutendea basi sasa hivi he possesses hona he possesses strength he possesses glory katika uh, ulimwengu kule katika kiti cha enzi mahali ambapo ameketi tunajua ya kwamba on earth he experience humiliation ya lamba nilikuwa nasema ya kwamba aligarauliwa wengi wakamdhihaki aliona a lot of shame lakini ni kwa ajili ya uzuri wetu walipokuwa wanamchekelea walipokuwa wanamdhihaki but now he has received all honor and glory that's why we find the whole heaven bingu nzima wanafikia katika kelele cha huduma cha uh, worship service by singing praises to the lamb of god they sing praises to the lamb of god because of what he did all that he went through and he made a victor alitokea mshindi walipoona wakanguka na kumsujudu na wanapoendelea kumwimbia na kumsujudu wanapoimba nyimbo za sifa tajua kwamba funga ambalo tulisoma la mwisho that is verses 14 basi the four living creatures and the 24 elders sauti ikatoka kuu inaposema namna gani amen maana yote ambao waliyaona wimbo ambao waliyatunga ili wapea tumaini katika maisha ili waimarisha katika imani wakawa uh, na missionary mish, uh, wakawa na ujumbe wa umishionari ka ulimwengu mzima wakawa na habari njema ambayo inaleta tumaini kwa wanadamu wote hivyo wote wakasema namna gani amen wanapofa namna gani wanapomsujudu Mungu keep in mind that all the praises centered on the Lord Jesus Christ the redeemer the savior the lamb the uh, the lion of judah who through him the whole universe sasa wanatangaza nini ushindi wa dhambi all heaven praises came because of what Christ did. He took the scroll and opened it. Jesus what did what? Took the scroll and opened it. Alichukua kitabu akaifungua. Basi bingu nzima ikaanguka inapomsujudu. On the day the lamb will break the seal again. Wakati ambapo anakuja na utukufu wake. Tunajua kwamba sisi wote ambao tumejiandaa kwa kumwabudu, tumejiandaa kwa kuomba msamao wa dhambi zetu tumejiandaa wa kupeleka ujumbe katika nchi za mbali kwa kujiandaa kwa kuokoa wengi waje katika neno hili 
kwa kuokoa wengi waje katika nuru tutampokea kwa sifa na utukufu ndio maana tunaambiwa tunapotamatisha ya kwamba as you share in this heavenly worship tunaposhiriki pamoja katika hii huduma ya ibada do you find yourself do you find your own heart saying amen after the song you've sung after the song that uh, your fellow brethren have sung do you find yourself saying amen je unajikuta kwamba unasema amina ama inakuacha wakati ambapo bado moyo wako ama roho yako haijaridhika inakuacha wakati your soul is still barren ama unapata kwamba baada ya wimbo ambao tumeaimba roho yako inapata furaha fulani roho yako inapata tumaini fulani roho yako inapata nguvu ya kuendelea na maisha haya hata kama yapi yanafanyika katika maisha yetu je after singing unapata roho yako ika namna gani because our soul should be elevated roho yetu inafaa kuinuliwa katika uimbaji ambao tunaimba ili tuweza kusema amen na yote yafanyike jinsi ambavyo tumeimba katika wimbo ile kristo anapotokea basi apata kwamba kuna tumaini tusiwe watu ambao wanaomboleza jinsi ambavyo ambavyo Yohana alikuwa akiombeleza kitu ambacho nataka usisahau ni kwamba after John had seen what Christ did alikomesha nini kuomboleza wote wakaingia katika nini katika kuimba tukomeshe mambo ya maombolezi katika wimbo hata tunapoimba tusiimbe nyimbo ambazo ni za uzuni sana yani unaimba kana kwamba una tumaini let us sing as people who have hope in life so that tunapoingia wengine nao pia waone matumaini waje katika bwana yetu now the time is for you and for me to sing for the lion of judah to sing for the root of david to sing for the lamb of god who took away the sin of the world may god bless us all may god bless you as we continue singing for the lord worshiping in truth and in spirit and let us join hands together to wache vita vya maneno katika uimbaji i know we are choir mara nyingi katika choir tunakuwa na fitina lakini mahali ambapo tunakuwa na maombi wakati ambapo tunaingia katika choir zetu practices hizo fitina zitaondoka kwa hivyo kama we ni wa fitina acha fitina katika choir kama wewe unaleta vita katika kwaya acha vita katika kwaya ili watu wanapoimba waimbe na roho moja waimbe wakiwa na furaha waimbe wakiwa na tumaini kama wewe ni wakelele katika kwaya acha kelele ili kwaya iweze kufaulu mahali ambapo kuna kwaya kuna kelele kwaya haiwezi endelea nzuri kama kuna kitu ambacho ambayo viongozi uh, wamesema pamoja baliana nao kama utaki toa mawazo yako katika njia ya upole njia ya upendo acha fitina kati kwa director anasema tuende hivi we unaenda the other side unafanya kwaya inagawanyika tuache mgawanyiko katika nini katika kwaya yule ambaye analeta mgawanyiko hauna nafasi katika falme wa bingu hivyo basi badilika haraka iwezekanavyo kabla wakati hujafika Yesu anaposhuka na utukufu wake kama unaleta fitina watu wa fitina wana nafasi katika uzimu wa milele. Acha fitina katika nini? Katika kwaya ili kwaya iweze kuimba. Kama wewe unaleta furugu katika kwaya achana nayo. Watu kama hao hawana nafasi katika uzimu wa milele. Fanya urafiki na kila mtu ili kwaya isimame, tuimbe nyimbo za sifa, watu wanapoona tuache mambo mengi masengenyo katika kwaya na ribu kwaya tuachane nayo. Usherati imejaa katika kwaya tuachane nayo maana inafaa mna gani inaribu kwaya ndio maana hata mavazi yetu inafaa kuwa yale ya heshima unapoimba iwe uh, inaonekana katika nini katika mavazi na mavazi ionekane katika roho sio kwa nje na ndani imechafuka Mungu awasaidie Mungu atusaidie katika uimbaji na Mungu awabariki katika jina la Yesu Amen Falme hiyo mlangoni So sababu mfalme yu mlangoni nataka tuimbe stanza 1 wengine walisema wako na njaa wako na alsas
pole sana stanza 1 alafu tunapoomba kama hujajiunga na kwaya tafuta kwaya uingie nasimama tunapoimba hiyo wimbo Asante kwa nafasi hii siku hii nzuri sabato la kutakatifu. Asante maana katika ufalme wako unaokuja hatutakuwa na kuhubiri tena, tutakuwa ni kuimba tu na kusifu jina la Yesu Kristo. Ndio maana tunaomba ya kwamba tupe sauti nzuri. Tuanze kujifunza kukuimbia wale ambao hajajiunga na kundi la uimbaji. Naomba wape sauti nzuri wape ujasiri na wape nyimbo nzuri ambazo wanaisaiba ukuna uwezo wa kufanya hivyo maana uimbaji ni talanta kutoka kwako wape watu wako kwa nafasi hii kwa wakati mzuri ili wazidi kukuimbia wanapopeleka habari njema katika nchi za mbali ili wengi waweze kuokolewa waje katika zizi lako na kwa ambazo zime, uh, ambazo zimeundwa tayari wanapoendelea kukuimbia Chetani hafurahii kwaya katika maisha haya. Analeta fitina, analeta masengenyo, analeta ushirati, analeta kila aina ya machafuko katika kwaya. Naomba ya kwamba uwazuie ili katika uimbaji wao wote ambao wamewashilishwa hapa siku ya leo, Mungu Baba wetu waweze kuonyesha utakatifu wako. Uweze kuwaweza uh, kuapa uh, kamilifu katika maisha haya waepukane na uashirati waepukane na masengenyo waepukane na uh, fitina na kila aina ya dhambi ambayo inafanya kwaya na sambaratika Mungu Baba wasaidie ili kila wakati waweze kutoa sifa na waweze kuonyesha ushindi ambao wanapata ndani ya Yesu Kristo wote ambao wanajiandaa kuingia pia wasaidie waingie wale ambao wameingia tayari wasaidie ili wasijivune wana kwamba ni heri kuliko wale ambao hawajaingia katika kwaya. Tenda mapenzi yao katika maisha yao, unapotuongoza katika ufalme wako ambao unakuja ili utakaposhuka wote kwa pamoja tupate nafasi ya uzimu wa milele. Tembea nasi sasa na hata daima ni katika jina la Yesu tuombe na tukuamini.